All right, in this video, we're going to be looking at absolute positioning and how that works in a CSS and HTML example. So we're going to go back to the same sheet we worked on before, except we're going to rearrange our HTML a little bit. We're going to take this blue box. And we're actually going to paste it inside of the red box. You'll recall in order to use absolute positioning, the element is positioned according to a parent tag. So we have to set up a parent and child relationship here. So red box in this instance is the parent and blue box is the child. Now let's set up some default CSS. So we'll just leave the red box alone. We'll just leave it 400 by 400 and leave it red. And this blue box, we're going to make 100 by 100 and leave this one blue. Now let's go back here and look at our HTML and refresh here and you'll be able to see the default layout. Now the red box is the parent and the blue box is the child and you can see that the blue box is in fact inside of the red box. Now let's switch this blue box to use absolute positioning. So let's come over here and I'm going to take the blue box and I'll give it its positioning context. So I'll say position absolute and in this instance I'm going to say top 100 pixels and left 100 pixels. Now you'll recall in order for absolute positioning to work, the parent element has to have a position. And right now the red box does not have a position. So I need to add one. And typically that's done just by saying position relative. I actually don't need to move the box at all. I just need to simply assign it a position. But as long as it has any type of position, it could be relative, absolute, or fixed, then this absolute positioning will work. But again, it, this is required for the parent element. Now let's go back to this blue box and save and refresh. Now top 100 and left 100. The main difference between the two of relative and absolute is with absolute positioning, the context is the parent element's edges. In other, in other words, the red box. So when I say top 100, it's referencing the top edge of the red box, not the blue box. So when I refresh here, it's pushing down 100 pixels from the top of the red, and it's pushing left 100 pixels from the left of the red. And that's where my blue box would appear. Now if I switch these values to bottom and right, I'm going to say bottom 100 pixels and right negative 100 pixels. So again, a positive value pushes up from the bottom edge. So bottom 100, it should push up 100. And then right negative 100, negative values push out. So it should push this way from the right edge of the parent. So I would expect this box to actually pop up right around over here when I refresh. So let's refresh this page. And sure enough, it pops up over there. Now it's moving right 100 and up 100 from the bottom. So again, remember that the, the context of the absolute positioning is not the blue box, rather the red box's edges. So when I say bottom 100, it's the red box's bottom edge, then up 100. So that's the main difference between the absolute and relative. Now the last thing we're going to look at is the fact that absolute positioned elements do remove themselves from the document flow. And this will contrast with the last video where we show that relative position positioning does not remove itself from the document flow. So in order to illustrate this, I'm going to delete this positioning here on the blue box to put it back at its default layout. I'm going to come over to my HTML and add a new div. So above this blue box, I'm just going to add another one. I'll say div ID equals, we'll just call this one green box. And we'll close that div and let's come add some CSS so we can see this. I'm going to copy all of this content here and just paste this down here for our green box. And we'll call this one green box. And let's make this one 200 by 200. And we'll make it green. Okay, so let's save and refresh. Uh, whoops, I haven't saved my uh, HTML here. Oh, it looks like I forgot to capitalize that. We'll stay consistent, the camel casing, green box like that. Make sure that my CSS has that capital B and it does. So we'll save and refresh. All right, and this is the default layout. Now the red box is the parent element and it has two children, 
this green box and this red box. This is 200 by 200 and 100 by 100. And this is the default layout. I haven't modified anything. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take this red box and we're going to modify its position with absolute positioning. And then we're going to um, actually we'll do just the opposite. We're actually going to modify this green box. So we're going to move the green box with absolute positioning. So we'll take green box and we'll say position absolute and we're going to say left zero and bottom zero. Now zero means move away from the left edge zero pixels. Let's actually switch this to right and move away from the bottom edge zero pixels. So it's going to use its parent elements position, which is the red box. It does have a position set, so it'll work. And now when we save and refresh, you can see that green box moves down zero pixels away from the bottom and zero pixels away from the right. Now you, you probably already noticed it, but what happened over here? This blue box moved up where the green box used to be. And that's because of absolute positioning. When we use absolute positioning, we remove the element from the document flow. You can kind of think of this as, as far as this blue box is concerned, this green box got removed from the document flow, which a way to think of it would be almost to en envision that this green box no longer even exists as far as the blue box is concerned. So it would just occupy its natural flow in the document, which is inside of the red box. It would be the first item. Now, obviously the HTML is in fact there, but that's a kind of a way to think of it when you use absolute positioning because this green box got removed from flow, and so the blue box thinks it no longer exists. So it would go up and occupy the space where it used to exist. Now to illustrate again the difference here, I'm gonna switch this green box now. Instead of saying position absolute, I'm going to say position relative, and I'll move this box now relatively back down to this green quarter. So if I refresh here, in order to move this green box using relative position, relative is according to itself, so I have to move it from where it naturally occurs over 200 pixels and down 200 pixels. So I would need to say left 200. So let's come back here. We'll say left 200 pixels and we'll say top 200 pixels to move it down from the top edge. And that should stick it back down in this corner. And it does in fact stay there. But notice now the blue box does not go up and occupy this space because with relative positioning, the blue box thinks that the red box is still here. That's the way that relative and absolute positioning work and kind of how they differ. So those couple of gotchas um, between these two types of positioning are often stumbling blocks when people start out writing CSS positioning. And you just really have to understand which items get removed from the document flow and how that will affect all the other items around it. So that's our quick intro into absolute positioning. In the next video tutorial, we're going to be looking at fixed.